Alright, so I'm sitting here on the Elite Dangerous homepage, just for the company website. And I want to do this because I want to point out a couple of interesting... well, they're not interesting. I want to point out some issues that I have with the way this game is being marketed. They aren't serious issues, I'm not accusing FDev of anything. I just think that these issues are evidence that there appears to be discordance on the direction of where Elite Dangerous is trying to go. And some of this discordance, I believe, is responsible for the way this game has been marketed, and for the lack of information that we've been receiving up to this point. Because we still don't really know a lot about what's going to be going on in Odyssey, and um, some of the questions the community's been asking lately haven't been answered. But a lot of this is just is pretty bog-standard marketing speak. Um, but there's a couple of specific things I want to point out. The first being that uh, the website still talks about seasons, meaning that they're trying to go for a model, they're implying at least, that they're going for a model that is similar to what Destiny 2 is doing right now. But in-game there is no reference to ongoing seasons, there is no indicator to mark the transition from one season to another. I think this is a holdover from Beyond and from Horizons, but my understanding, or at least the implication that's been taking place here, is that the Elite's not doing that anymore, like the seasonal models ended. I'm not clear on this, and so I'm wondering why it's still here on the website, because this makes me think that, that it is still a thing, and the implication would be um, regular paid updates going forward. But we've yet to hear anything about other paid updates. We still don't have a, a real roadmap for the long-term goals that this game has underway. So I, I don't know what FDev is, is trying to communicate to me by saying seasons. Um, the other thing that it keeps talking about is that Elite Dangerous still consistently markets itself as an MMO. It's you against the universe, and there's thousands of other commanders who are on the same journey, and yet the game feels balanced like a single-player title. Like when I when I sat down and started playing this, I remember thinking like there were some really cheesy things that I could do that were similar to cheesy things that could be done in Skyrim, albeit a little bit less dramatic. And even now, um, if you get into combat in any serious way, you're going to learn that there is a lot of game-breaking cheese that you can engage in in different ways to really mess with how the game manages interactions. I've seen a couple of videos recently of how you can exploit the uh, anarchy state in different systems to troll people in a station using smart rounds. Basically, you can fire on people inside of a station's hangar bay with complete indiscretion and not be fined for the free fire zone, and if you happen to hit the station instead of the ship, the rounds self-destruct and you do no damage. So um, you can actively blow people up inside the docking bay in these anarchy systems, which I don't think is intended gameplay. but is also kind of beside the point. It's an example of cheese that has never been dealt with and that uh, there are probably dozens of examples of that you can deal with right now. And these are the kinds of things you would expect from a single player game. And in fact, if I remember correctly, Elite Dangerous was originally marketed in its Kickstarter as the next Elite, which has always been a single player PC local game to the, you know, the same flavor as the X franchise. So I feel like Elite is being ripped two directions right now, and that the developers haven't even fully decided which direction they want to fully go in, because on the one hand, they're marketing it as an MMO, but on the other hand, it feels like a single-player title and caters greatly to the single-player experience by offering solo and private modes. Now, I don't want to jump into the weeds on the solo-private debate, but I feel like I'm going to have to in order to continue making these points, because this combat mechanic problem is not sustainable. It is continuing to dog on people like me who have a ton of experience in the game and we're just really bugged by it. We've heard nothing about any changes to combat balancing and in fact some of the stuff they've talked about in Odyssey make me even more concerned about combat balancing. And I'll probably come back and do a more detailed video on this. Let me see if they've got any... Uh, they don't have any SRV stuff in here but Odyssey is talking about combined arms gameplay while also admitting at the same time that ships won't be able to target people and people aren't going to carry weapons that will be able to deal with at least the larger ships but but ships in general and if you're familiar with star citizen you'll know that there are shoulder launched weapon systems that can threaten large ships 
in Star Citizen. I think the only vessels that are immune to the effect are like the very most massive ships in the game. And the way that they balance that out is that these giant ships that might be immune to shoulder-fired weapons are going to be so unwieldy to fly in atmosphere that you will be severely compromising their performance to do so. Um, where with Elite Dangerous, these almost skyscraper-sized ships are going to be able to maneuver with complete impunity essentially everywhere that they go. And I don't think there's anything that's going to stop a shield tank cutter from just carpet bombing these surface outposts in order to hopefully frag standing personnel that might be around them. And that kind of oversight does not, does not feel like a good MMO to me. It feels like the kind of thing that you get away with in a single player game. Think like Cyberpunk. Because you don't have to be as worried about balance when the only people who are getting stomped on are NPCs. In fact, it makes it kind of fun. Skyrim has some hilarious effects. I don't know if you've ever heard of Thor's Table Fork, where you just glitch the alchemy system to create really stupidly powerful table... Like, the Table Fork is a wieldable weapon in, in uh, Skyrim, if you didn't know. You can exploit different self-propagating loops in the game to basically give a Table Fork the amount of damage of... Like, well, basically infinite damage. Instantly kill somebody with lightning chains and different things like that. Um... I don't think there's going to be anything that dramatic in Elite, although there have been some pretty broken things in the past, uh, especially with thermal weapons, but um, the, the, the fact that they keep talking about combined arms and, and all these other things and not giving us any direct answers as to how these mechanics are going to work make me think that there is still some type of internal conflict within the, de within the developer studio, and I don't know what that looks like. I, I'm kind of speculating because I don't, I don't have any good answers for this, and I don't think anybody else does either. So what this really is, what this rant is at its heart, is me trying to communicate to hopefully somebody at FDev. I don't, honestly, I'm not arrogant enough to think that they're watching my channel. But maybe by sticking it out in the community, um, there will be a chance that some type of criticism on the level of what I'm pointing out can maybe get to somebody in the decision-making loop. Because... I'm, I'm really worried about this. This, uh, this is something that they've got to figure out. They need to decide if they're going to be an MMO or a single-player game. And I'll be honest, I, I could go either way. I think Elite could be a really good single-player game if they wanted to do that. But based on the amount of investment that they have in this multiplayer stuff that they're putting in, I, I don't think there's any going back. And I don't think that Elite can survive years of this straddling the fence, are we single-player, are we multiplayer? Because what I would like after to do is pick one and move the game in that direction. And don't apologize for it. Understand that you are going to chase people away from Elite by doing this. I, I might get chased away from Elite by doing this, but I would rather the game be successful and I move on to play something else than have it wallow in this indecisive mess that it's been in for several years now, where nobody can really figure out what the game's supposed to be. And what that means really is like when I talk about like what kind of information does the community need, we don't have to know everything that's coming down the pipeline in the future. We don't need to have every single feature set, every single concept spelled out with different quarters and different uh, due dates, like like Star Citizen was doing a few years back. It's it's not what anyone in the community is asking for. What what we need more than anything from FDev is for them to come out and basically give us enough information to know the direction the game is going because oh space legs is not good enough especially when guys like kaizen are asking really serious questions that nobody seems to be able to answer aside from giving us the same markety blah blah corporate sludge that you get from everybody in the industry except cloud imperium I, honestly Whatever you think of Star Citizen, their community relationship is, is way better than, than Elite's, even if they're making mistakes. Because at least I understand where they're going. At least I get what the objective is, and I can buy into that, and I have. I have the basic, uh, the basic game package in Star Citizen, and that's all they're going to get from me until I start to see some major movement in, in a direction like forward, because they're still kind of mucking around. At, anyway, it doesn't matter. As a customer, I would be willing to pay a subscription to Elite Dangerous if I knew where the game was going to be in two years. And that seems like like a, a lot, but that's a, that's a, the basic concept for a, 
a mid-level corporate plan. Like what, where do you want the game to be in two years, FDEV? Spell out the ideal environment with complete understanding that this is all notional and it could change based on how difficult different technologies are. But I want to know where the game ideally is going to be in two years, assuming everything goes right and we don't have another virus outbreak or the world doesn't come to an end. And what, what kind of game are you trying to make elite? Because if you want it to be an MMO and be fun for everybody, if you want it to be the, the, the best MMO it can be, you can't have solo and private mode. It's not doable. Because solo and private mode give you way too many options to cheat the different BGS simulations and ultimately push everybody into their their own version of the Elite Universe that's completely separated from everything taking place. You either... I, I, this is And this is the opinion of somebody who isn't a game developer, but, but who's played enough games to understand what I want. And I'm tired of trying to do BGS stuff only to be beaten out by somebody who is in solo play. I am tired of all of the shenanigans that take place in open play that are ignored because, oh, um, the players can just get into solo. Because that's why the combat mechanics in this, in this game are so janky. But that's why you get massive, cheesy bullcrap that you can pull with ships like the Fertilance that are just so unbeatable in most encounters. FDEV hasn't fixed them because in their minds... I think it's they, they just think that you know you, you're in open play you know you sign into open play it's all on you but it's not some of this is on bad game balance and at some point if you want elite to be the best MMO it can be private group and solo play have to go away and that's a hard thing for people in the community I know that's super controversial but at some point for Elite to realize what it's trying to be, what they say it's supposed to be here in the feature set, it has got to get rid of solo and private mode because it is a band-aid that is trying to cover up a lot of broken stuff in the game's combat mechanics. And I'll be honest, like if I if I booted up the game tomorrow and discovered that, that solo and private were gone, I would have a hard time playing in open because I'm aware of the cheese that takes place. And I've done open play. I, when I go out with AXI, we're all in open. We're all playing together. It's not like I'm scared of open play. It is that there are inter there are a lot of interactions that I have in this game that have foregone conclusions, not because I am a bad pilot, but because the best kits in this game are so much superior to anything else you can possibly equip that there is no reason to equip anything else. It's like when low temperature diamonds were the major mining cheese um, and spending time mining anything else was just wasting effort. I hated that. I, I hated the lack of creativity, I hated the lack of options, and I still hate them now because if you want to fly around in open play, the number of ships that can be easily outfitted to do so without engineering are almost non-existent. So new players don't get to participate, and old players basically get to curb stomp everybody who isn't also in a uh, hundred plus million dollar fertile, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but fertile answers are expensive, and to engineer them, it, it's, you know, a hundred hours of gameplay. It takes a lot of time to get all of your kit together if you're a new player without experience. So what that means is, um, to transition the game to an open-only environment, FDEV has to go in and it has to basically address all of the stuff that it's been failing to address. And it's not just combat, by the way. There are economic loops that need to be tightened up. There are gameplay interactions that need more dynamic options for players. Like, I've talked about that Super Cruise needs to have... One of the big things Super Cruise needs is a way to hide. There needs to be stealth mechanics in Super Cruise so that if you aren't equipped to win a fight, you can hide from the people who want to fight. And it shouldn't be a perfect solution. There should be ways the people who want to fight can find you but it should require them to have help. Like, the Fertilance can be the king of combat, fine. I, I'm okay if, that, if, if FDEV wants that to be the meta, but give us some options to fight the Fertilance that don't involve another Fertilance. Like, if, if I'm in a cargo ship and I want to smuggle cargo into a power play system, give me a way so that, with skill, I can evade the Fertilance in Super Cruise using stealth or some other tools, or maybe even, hell, 
flying in normal space with infinite acceleration, relativistic physics, so that if I'm patient, I can take the long route and fly to a station without going into supercruise and just accelerate and decelerate using autopilot or something. I don't know. But, but give, give me options. That's the big thing I need. I don't have options. And, and to be willing to tell some of the Care Bears in the community to harden up. Because there's a lot of stuff in Elite that is just too easy. Exploration is too easy. Uh, rearm, refuel, repair mechanics in this game are too cheap. In fact, it would help deal with whimsical ganking if ammunition and ship repairs were more expensive. Because it would mean that players who want to go out and spend their ammo and risk hull damage need to be ensuring that they are performing an activity that will generate revenue because otherwise they're bleeding their bank accounts dry. That's a strong economic disincentive for ganking and, and harassment and griefing, and it seems to be working reasonably well in Star Citizen. In fact, that's one of their plans, is to make sure that players are using the resources they're given the way intended by providing economic disincentives. Now, I don't think that ship repair... I think if you're going to make it so that ships can be totaled the way they used to be, that your rebuy or your insurance policy should come into effect and that there should be a way to blunt that with insurance, but it needs to hurt. It shouldn't be like, like having your fingernails ripped off, but it should be painful to waste resources. When you come back to a station with a ton of hull damage and you don't have a single bounty, it should suck. It should be consequential. If you wreck an anaconda down to like 20% hull integrity, your repair bill should be a couple of million credits. And it should maybe even require waiting a couple of minutes while you sift through the job boards or look at other economic opportunities to have repairs completed. Fuel and, um, and ammo are the same story. And I would actually like to see multiple types of ammunition available. Instead of just the bog standard regular ammo that we have, give everybody the option to buy standard or premium at the station and adjust the synthesis recipes accordingly. Um, go in and, and try and and anchor down these different gameplay loops so that the types of behavior that are pissing everybody off are not beneficial. Because right now, um, I think the most I've ever paid to repair a ship was my Federal Corvette, and it was maybe a little over 100,000 credits. It, it's like, it's nothing money. One bounty pays for it, even if you're in a large ship. It shouldn't be like that. And the way it really ought to work is if you take a large ship to some place where it's completely overpowered, like a low-intensity conflict zone, it shouldn't make you enough money to pay for your fuel, your ammo, and your hull repairs. Full stop. If you take a large... like You should make it so that large ships need to be taken to large ship activities. If you're flying a large ship, you should be at a high-intensity conflict zone. Maybe a medium. And the way that you do that is that you make the ammunition and repair costs such that it doesn't it isn't fruitful to be engaged in these activities without those resources. And you should also make it so that the NPCs react accordingly to a player's level. If you take a little ship into a high-intensity conflict zone, some of the medium ships should prioritize you as a target because you are an easy one. The NPCs aren't trying to win when you go into these conflict zones. They're just kind of farting around randomly shooting at each other, and without player input, the events can kind of go either way. No, the NPCs should be trying to win. They should be engaging in logical construction of ship builds, taking advantage of all of the current game mechanics that are available. If the Fertilance is the best possible ship that you can equip, we should see Fertilance's running player-style kit in these instances. And yeah, people will complain because NPCs have perfect aimbot, but there are a lot of commanders who are pretty close to perfect aimbot through just sheer skill alone. And that will expose some of the weaknesses in the combat loops. It will bring this stuff to the surface, and it will force it to be dealt with. That's what's necessary. I mean, if you want to make an, an MMO, it's you've got to go this way. And it's not like I'm trying. I'm trying not to be a jerk. I'm trying to be as constructive as possible with my feedback because I'm I'm frustrated with the game's position. I still enjoy it, but I think that that. Elite Dangerous is, is not in a good place. It is holding together, and it will continue to hold together for a few more years, assuming you know nothing changes at the helm. Uh, but Chris Roberts is going to eat this game's lunch when Star Citizen comes out. And I think Star Citizen, realistically, is a mid-decade venture. They're playing the long game. It's a high-risk long game, 
I treat the money that I threw at, uh, at Star Citizen the same way I treat money thrown at Bitcoin. You don't know if it's going to win. It might all evaporate. I don't think it will evaporate. But I'll be sitting in a good position to have what, if it's successful, will be one of the greatest games in human history. And Elite has the potential to compete. They have a huge leg up over, over Cloud Imperium right now because they're a full-release game that is actively generating revenue on its own merit and not through donations for something notional that might come in the future. And I feel like they're squandering it. They're going to lose if they don't tighten up. And maybe that means the corporate structure in, in Frontier has to be reorganized. Maybe that means that you have to spin this game off as its own independent thing under the Frontier umbrella. The way that 343 Industries is spun off under Microsoft. Whatever's getting in the way needs to be dealt with, because if FDev can't learn to come back through and, and tighten up their game, they're not, they're not going to be remembered well. And Star Citizen's going to blow them out of the water when it comes out. If it comes out. And it's a high-risk position to be in. Because this franchise... Yeah, I don't know if it comes back. It's a really cool gameplay franchise. It's got some of the oldest history in the video game world. I think it would be really sad if it if it never came back. And, and I, uh, I... I don't know... I don't know why... Why FDev insists on constructing their community relations the way that they do. But I'll be honest, I'm losing a lot of faith in Odyssey. The way that that they're treating information, the, the, like they're trying to be coy and play it up like it's cool, but it's not actually. It's incredibly frustrating. Because a lot of the community is starting to believe that, that you guys at FDev know that stuff is broken, and you're hoping that we'll just put up with it until it gets fixed. And some of the community is patient enough to do that. I have been... I have been among the patient people, but I am starting to run out of patience, and I don't know what else to do. So, yeah, uh, this just call this a frustrated rant. I'm gonna call it whatever you want. Um, let me know. Let me know whatever in the comments. I guess I'll uh, I'll catch you guys later.